Hello and welcome to this uh, vi short video uh, lecture. Uh, my name is Badr Al Kandari. I'm one of the PhD students working with Professor Palavan. I'll be going through a short summary for Bianchi's paper. The paper is titled uh, Performance Analyses of uh, the IEEE 802.11 Distributed Coordinated Function. So this is the outline for the presentation. I'll be talking about uh, a short summary of the IEEE 822.11 distributed coordinated function. I am going to go then through the model assumptions that Bianchi made in his paper, his uh, analysis steps, what his Markov model is, and what the key probabilities are. I'll go then through the throughput calculation, then finally, I'm going to go through the relationship between the packet size and the throughput. I'll provide a summary for the rest of the lecture and show some references for those of you that are interested in reading more on this. DCF stands for the Distributed Coordination Function in the IEEE uh, 802.11 model. Uh, it is based on the carrier sense multiple axis uh, method with a collision avoidance. Uh, the figure on the right shows a summary of that. I am not going to go through details here. I'm just going to provide uh, quick summaries of this. And the RTS mechanism, or the DCF, um, has a backoff time counter that is determined by uh, choosing a window size W uh, that's limited between a minimum size CW min and a maximum size uh, CW max uh, where this number this window length is uniformly distributed in the interval from of uh, 0 to W minus 1 uh, the constant W is uh, originally set to CW min so it's always set to the minimum window size and then it's doubled after each uh, unsuccessful transmission until it reaches the maximum window size CW max. Uh, the contention window size CW is uh, reset to uh, CW min and the backoff procedure is performed after each uh, successful transmission. So this is just the summary of uh, how the, the uh, distributed coordination function uh, works. The problem with uh, carrier sense multiple access with uh, collision avoidance is that you get a uh, hidden uh, the hidden terminal problem and the figure uh, on the bottom left of the screen uh, shows uh, that problem so you have three nodes uh, where uh, no node B or station B is sitting in the middle and you have stations A and C uh, that ca are not visible to each other and you want to try and both stations A and C want to transmit uh, data to station B but uh, with both since they cannot see each other they both sense that the medium is uh, available or the channel is available and they both send a packet at the same time this results in a collision at uh, station B and you get a uh, lost packet so to avoid this problem the uh, additional overhead is, requ uh, is inserted in the form of uh, two packets, uh, the request to send and uh, clear to send packets, and that's where RTS CTS uh, comes from. So uh, the, the, these two frames are used to uh, address this uh, hidden terminal issue. Uh, there are other uh, parameters in this, so how the MSDU is fragmented into multiple MPDUs, but I am not going to go through that in this lecture. So just to have like a quick uh, visual representation of this, on the bottom right over here, you can see how the request to send, uh, clear to send would work if you have uh, three stations. so for the assumptions um, throughout the paper uh, Bianchi assumes you have a fixed number of stations this is uh, slightly different from the one in the uh, uh, textbook of the class where 
uh, there is an assumption of an infinite number of stations and uh, certain uh, traffic load G. In here, he also assumes uh, that each packet has a, each station has a packet to transmit. So there is no any as, there is no assumption of uh, arrival conditions. At any given time, a station has a packet it wants to transmit. Uh, this leads us to this uh, network saturation condition. So you are looking at the maximum throughput of the network, the maximum possible throughput of the network. Uh, he also assumes that the channel conditions are ideal and packet errors uh, only occur due to transmission collisions. He also assumes that there is no hidden terminal problem, uh, which is a little bit uh, counterintuitive uh, to what uh, RTS CTS should do, but since RTS CTS addresses the problem, that's the reason of his assumption there. Um, he has also assumes that uh, the collision probabilities uh, of packets transmitted by uh, each station are constant and independent of each other, regardless of the number of uh, retransmissions that the packet has already suffered. Uh, the analysis steps in the paper uh, follow the fo following these follow these steps. Um, uh, he first studies the behavior of a single station uh, using a Markov model, which in turn gives you the probability tau that transmits a packet in a generic time slot. And then he calculates the throughput for both uh, carrier sense multiple access with collision avoidance, which is uh, what he commonly refers to as the basic uh, method. And then uh, he requ uh, does the same for request to send, clear to send, as a function of this probability. This figure shows the Markov chain that uh, he uses to model the uh, window size uh, throughout the uh, paper. This is by far the hardest part of the paper. Uh, this uh, chain is actually non-Markovian, but with certain assum assumptions, it becomes a stationary Markov chain. And throughout these assumptions, he calculates uh, two probabilities, tau and p. I'm not going to go through the details of this chain. It's a little bit complicated. Um, if you need extra information on this, you can either come and talk to me or uh, just read his paper. The Markov model provides these two probabilities, tau and p. The probability tau actually depends on the collision probability p. And from the Markov model, you can get these two equations, tau and p. Those two equations are nonlinear, and uh, for a different number of nodes n, um, you can actually solve these equations numerically using a nonlinear solver. In the handout uh, that was given to you in class, the uh, method I used was the default method in MATLAB, and you could adjust the parameters on that, and you could also do other things like uh, runga keta methods and such. So now, since we have these two probabilities, uh, we can now calculate the throughput. Throughout the paper, he actually uh, calculates the normalized throughput. So he assumes you have a constant physical layer data rate of 1 megabit per second. And the throughput is defined as the number of bits in a packet uh, divided by the total duration, or in this case, the length of a slot time uh, to transmit this data. So you want to think about this as bits over delay. Okay. Um, he actually goes uh, through the paper through several uh, probabilities that he uses to get this throughput. Uh, the first one being the probability of having at least one transmission in a slot time. Then he goes through the probability of having a successful transmission. And then the average uh, time is calculated. So if you look at the definition of the uh, throughput S at the bottom, the denominator is actually an average of the uh, slot durations. The first case, what he has, 1 minus the probability of transmission, PDR, uh, all multiplied by sigma, 
is the condition is the case or the condition where uh, the channel is free and the node or the station transmits uh, immediately in that channel. The second one is when two nodes want to uh, access the slot and that's where the average time uh, or, the av or the probability of being in that situation is the, a conditional probability which turns out to be the probability of transmission multiplied by the probability of successful transmission. And the last case is when you have a contention um, and uh, the probability for that is given by uh, PTR the multiplied by 1 minus PS and um, if you want to think about this, this is the same as the uh, definition of averages that you would take in a, in a probability course. So the it's basically the probability of an event happening times the value of that event plus the other probability of the other event happening times the probability of that event and so on. The two delays outside of the slot time sigma, uh, so TS and TC, uh, are uh, calculated using the same uh, method that you actually did in class uh, in one of the examples, uh, namely the UDP and TCP examples. This is also the same as in your homework. So the idea is you look at a simple diagram and you keep calculating these overheads uh, from RTS, SIFs, uh, CTS and several other interframes. The parameter expected value of P here is actually the average length of the uh, packet size. So in the paper he does say that the packet size can vary but throughout the analysis he always assumes that the packet size is actually fixed. So I'm just gonna follow his assumption here and continue with this. These equations are the same that you actually same ones that you have in the handout. So to uh, look at this now, you have the Markov chain. Then you had the uh, two probabilities tau and p. You solve uh, those uh, numerically for different numbers of n, uh, the number of stations. Then you calculate the two overheads, whether you want to do it for carrier sense multiple access with uh, collision avoidance or you want to do it for request to send, clear to send. And the idea here is, for our purposes at least, is to look at this from a data applications perspective. So if you go through the uh, previous steps in the handout given in class, uh, you can generate this plot over here. Okay, this plot is the same as the one in his paper. So, what we did here is we generated the throughput S in the previous slide uh, by calculating the different probabilities for different number of, uh, numbers of nodes of stations. I did it here for two numbers, uh, basically 10 stations and 50 stations. And the multiple plots actually uh, are for different physical layer uh, systems. So you can have FHSS, Frequency Hopping spe Spectrum, uh, DSSS, um, Direct Sequence spe Spectrum, or IR. The solid lines are for uh, request to send, clear to send. The dashed and dotted lines are for uh, ca carrier sense multiple access with collision avoidance. What's interesting to see here is for large packet sizes, which usually occur in data applications, the throughput is actually uh, better if you use the uh, RTS, CTS over uh, carrier sensing. Um, and the number is approximately around uh, 8,000 is when RTS, CTS starts outperforming uh, carrier sense multiple axis collision avoidance. There are other plots in his uh, paper, so I encourage you, uh, the people that are interested to go ahead and read that. If you have any other questions, feel free to come and ask. Uh, I'm going to go in the next step of, uh, uh, through the conclusion of his paper and what I did through here in the slides. So in summary, uh, his paper uh, studies the behavior of a single station operating under saturation conditions using a Markov model. 
the paper calculates the saturation throughput for both uh, the basic uh, method and the request to send clear to send as functions of the probability tau. For data transmission applications, from what we've seen in the last figure, uh, the request to send clear to send outperforms carrier sense multiple accents with uh, collision avoidance. Even though he specifically does not address that application in his paper, that is actually one of the important results. Of the paper. These are the references I used uh, throughout this uh, uh, small lecture, so short video. Um, for those of you that are interested in uh, the details of the Markov model, I would recommend uh, Reference 3 by uh, Hassan Abu Bakr Omar. Actually, he goes through the Markov model in extensive detail. Uh, the second reference actually provides a very nice summary of uh, what Bianchi's paper was. and uh, It just goes through the conclusions of that uh, paper. Uh, thank you for listening. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask or shoot me an email.